I am about to say one very contradictive and probably going to be hateful statement over many others. Text is the worst way to communicate. Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another video. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you are going, BS, that's stupid, that's not true. Take into consideration what I'm about to say if you think that. If not, just click away from this video, you don't have to watch it. Now I will say this is based off of thousands and thousands of thousands from when I was much younger to now, like of experiences. I'm going to get started in talking about this though. So, I've had some pretty bad experiences through text. I'll say something to almost anybody in very particular wording, and that somebody will take it a completely different way than it's meant to be. I'll read it like 10 times over at 10 different points in times, and I'll be like, yeah, I get what I'm saying. How did they take it this way? Trying to figure out that maybe by the 45th time I'll figure out, ah, I see how it'd be interpreted like that. Wow, text is stupid. That's a literal. That's literally the sentence that would come right after I'd figure it out. Text versus verbal conversation has dras have drastic cons towards text and pros towards verbal. Let's talk about those before the other way around. In fact, no. Let's. Let's do the other way around first. Pro for text over conversation. Sometimes people can't talk when they're busy, but they can look at text really quick and then go back and respond later. That's the one thing about text that's good. You can give a person time to respond. That was the original point of it in the first place. Not to go back and forth on some kind of... Like, like you would in a normal generic conversation. If you text someone, you should expect them not to respond for a long period of time. That's the point of a text. Now, that's like the one pro I can think of. Literally one. Let's go over the con that I brought up at the beginning that's not so much the case verbal. I'm going to go through a couple different scenarios that, are, that can be taken very in text that would be completely different if you were to have a normal conversation. Let's start with anger, or frustration, or agitation. You know, any of those type of negative reactions. In text, depending on the person, you can either all caps it, or you could just say it by generic text. Now, the, I say depending on the person because about 50% of people, when they get the, that kind of Verbal, when you usually have that verbal tone, if you're putting it through text, usually a lot of people will all caps everything. Not everyone. That's why I said 50% of them. So how are you supposed to know? About 50% of the other 50% who don't do this use all caps for emphasis, which makes this even more confusing. Like, for example, pretend I'm angry. You stupid piece of crap. Like, say I text... Or not that. That's... If I were to text that, it'd be obvious that I'm angry. But let's say I'm angry in my mind, but I'm trying to have, like, a business-type conversation, explain something, or the reasoning behind the frustration. I don't, like, burn anybody or anything, but I try to explain it, and I explain it in a way where some people can actually feel tension on the other side of the phone. But for all you know, that tension could be coming from the person who's feeling it, that person's ten. Like sometimes for me, example, when I have conversations with random individuals, I can feel tension within the conversation, or at least within the area, I should say. Makes me assume that the person is mad about something. However, 
that's not always the case. What if it's me having tension because I'm getting stressed over the conversation going on? Thing is, when that type of tension shows up, you can never tell. Is it coming from them or is it coming from me? I don't know. Or for your guys' case, what if you are having the same type of conversation, you feel that tension? How do you know that's not just you getting stressed? Or how do you know it's not the other person getting frustrated? Or agitated, upset, angry, whatever word you might choose. How do you know? There aren't, unless you know the person well enough and know that they use very specific key words when they get to this point, you would never know. And that's where this whole situation really becomes a problem. All caps. Usually, all caps is known to showcase frustration, but it's also known to showcase emphasis. What if somebody decides to emphasize one entire statement? How could you tell the difference between whether they're emphasizing on it or whether they're actually getting frustrated? Hmm? You can't. It's downright impossible to tell. But if you were in person, the tone of the voice would give it away like that. People try to hide it, but you can always tell by the tone of someone's voice or the fire in somebody's eyes whether or not they're actually in that kind of mindset. I think that's a great example of this kind of thing. But in case it doesn't um, quite fill in enough of the blanks to kind of emphasize on what I mean, let's use the term, I'm fine. People use that term all the time for different reasons. Try to convince somebody else that they are okay even if they're not, or they're actually saying they are okay, and they, you know, they are. But how do you know which one it is when you're texting? Someone messages you out of concern. Are you okay? I'm fine. Texts back. But how do you know? How do you know it's that tone? How do you know it's not? I'm fine. Like I'll give you guys a scenario. A group of people are hanging out. Two of them know each other a lot much more than the rest of the group, and the group says something very offensive that normally would impact one of those two individuals. One of them goes into shock on what was said, but was warned ahead of time. The two individuals leave in individual cars. While they're paused at a light, or when they get home, let's put it that way, when they get home, the one who got shocked was texted by the other. Are you okay? I know something, I know what they said back there can really impact you at times. Are you okay? And the one who was shocked by it sends the text, I'm fine. How do you take that? Most people would look at that and go, oh, okay, well, that's all right. And then they'd leave it. They wouldn't say that, sorry. They'd just say, okay, well, as long as you're doing all right. And then they'd leave it. But let me give you this scenario. What if the person who said, I'm fine, if they were to do it verbally, they'd go, I'm fine. Immediately you can tell, no, they're not. That's the problem with text. It can be taken so many ways to the point where if you were to assume, which most people do, they'll look at the text and assume something. They won't clarify, they'll just assume based off what they see. And whenever somebody does that, through a text, it can be bothersome because it can lead to problems that are just downright not necessary. I've actually been in some of those issues before. Not going to talk about them because that's kind of something that I want to leave off of here, but it is an issue. If you were to be presented with something like that, 
you shouldn't be ex if you like if somebody again were to text the term I'm fine there are several different ways that can be put let's go back to that scenario if the, the, the guy could have meant I'm fine in that case obviously he's doing fine it just impacted him slightly but he's okay or she's okay depending on the scenario I don't know there okay let's put it that way they could also text back I'm fine in the sense of I'm fine which means it agitated them it upset them they don't want to talk about it or the third scenario the one I first presented it hurt them but they don't want to show it that's the problem with that term on text and if I were to go off a tangent about how bad text can actually be compared to verbal conversation this would take hours to talk about because there are so many phrases out there in fact I could probably go off of almost every single phrase in existent existence because there's one other factor nowadays through text that is worse than a verbal conversation a smartphone's microphone that is one major con that just adds to the problems of texting. Because because of the fact that you're not supposed to text while driving, but that's, let's be honest, people, they want to have conversations over a phone that's not via call. A lot of people still do that. They always will. That's just unavoidable, which is kind of sad. It's why so many accidents, well, not all of them, but a lot of accidents happen because of that. And this microphone helps, but doesn't. Because a microphone, when you talk into it, you'll say specific things, and it'll take half the words you say as correct, but the other half will be something else. And because of that, it can be once it's sent, it can be taken a completely different way than what you were trying to say in the first place. Like, there's probably a term I can actually give as an example. Let me see, because I actually kept something for this, but I have so many notes that... Irrelevant, for example. The term irrelevant. I-R-R-E-L-E-V-A-N-T. You say that into the microphone of a phone, and it will not read that half of the time. It'll read the letter A, space, relevant. If it sends that instead of your original word, I guarantee you the, the conversation will rise to a completely different problem. Because the receiving end will read it as something completely different. Than what you were trying to say because of the microphone being a big stupid piece of crap <laughs> these are like the three major problems with smart like with with texting nowadays smartphone texting specifically since let's be honest that's mainly what everyone owns anybody who owns a flip phone or something like that you don't have to you can avoid this last problem but you still have to be careful of the first two Regardless, that's a very small fraction. At least as far as I know. But I guess in the long haul, my main point is text. Don't. If you can, avoid it. Okay, rephrase because of that don't. Basically, for text, if you have a way of avoiding texting somebody, do it. Don't text if you don't absolutely have to because it has a high percentage of leading to problems if you word something in a way that can be taken multi in multiple different ways it's an issue with text that has always existed that will always exist and it's a problem I've always had with text Anyway, what are your guys' thoughts? Do you agree with what I've said? Have you had situations like this? 
Or is it just me and my rotten luck? Let me know in the comments below. Want to check out any of the discussion and rants that have been done on this channel? Click the link on the side of my head here, where our train will take you to that destination with at this point, I'm assuming over 200 stops. I don't keep track anymore. Or if this kind of stuff doesn't really float your boat and you want to check something else that might will, click the link on this side where the train will take you to something else you might enjoy a bit more. In the meantime, I'm going to head off. Thanks for tuning into this episode, guys, and we hope to see you guys in another video. Catch you guys later.